Evening. Sorry, there was some issue in my laptop. That's why. Okay. Any doubt from last class, Samira? Yes, I have doubt from the assignment. Okay, just tell me. The sonometer experiment, the density of the material of the wire used is 7.5 into 10 raised to 3 kg per meter cube. If the stress of the wire is 3 into 10 raised to 8 newton per meter square, find out the speed of the transverse wave in the wire. Okay, okay. We have to calculate velocity of transverse wave. So according to the formula, velocity equals to root under T by mu. We may transform this particular tension according to the relation Stress equals to amount of deforming force per unit area. This particular force may also be treated as tension in the string by area. So you may write tension equals to stress multiplied by area. Next is volumetric density rho, which is mass by volume, and volume is area times length. Mass per unit length is also called linear mass density, mu divided by A. So mu from this part will be rho times A. So if you substitute these two parts in this equation, you will get stress multiplied by area, rho multiplied by area, root under. This part and this part will cancel out. So you'll get velocity is equals to root under stress by rho. Now you have stress and volumetric mass density. Substitute these down and simplify your answer. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Any more doubt? No, sir. Okay. So in last class, I had defined you velocity of transverse wave and longitudinal wave up to this part. Next part of this chapter is equation of traveling wave. If you have equation y equals to a times sine omega t. So this is equation of SHM in which there is only one term which is time dependent function. So it will define vibration of particle about their mean position only. There is no any particular function this part to define its displacement along horizontal line or vertical line or any word coordinate axis. So let me define you another equation y is equals to a times sine omega t plus minus k times x. In this part, we have two different functions. One is time dependent and the other is x dependent. So in this part, we can say particle will be both oscillating about their mean position as well as displacing from one point to another. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So let me define you its meaning, different, different term. Here y defines you displacement of particle. A is maximum displacement, which is also called amplitude. Omega is angular velocity, which is equals to two pi by T or two pi F. K is angular wave number. So it is equals to two pi by lambda. 
Next, this x will define you direction of propagation of wave. In which direction wave is traveling? Next, this plus sign and this minus sign has its opposite meaning. Plus sign will define negative coordinate axis in which wave is traveling and this negative sign will define it is traveling along positive axis. Like in this part, wave is going along x axis. So if it be positive x, then it will be wave of traveling or direction of traveling wave be along negative x axis. And if there is negative sign in between, it means wave is going along positive x axis. Is it clear? Yes. Sir. And then the last part, this entire term is nothing but angle of sign. So it will define phase of that particular wave. So this is phase. Arslan, any doubt? So first question related to this part will be, <clears throat> if y equals to 0 0.02 times cos, Two pi by five t plus pi times x. Then find first time period, second wavelength, third direction of propagation. Just write it down and try to solve. So Myra, any doubt when solving? So we just have to substitute the value. Yeah, just compare these two equation. First, for coefficient of t, we have two pi by lambda, but in above equation, coefficient of t is nothing but omega. So on comparing, you can say omega is two pi by five, okay? Yes. So from this part, 
if you equate it to two pi by t, you will get time period. Similarly, coefficient of x is called k. So if you substitute k equals to two pi by lambda, you will get lambda. Omega, we have two pi by five, which is equals to two pi by t. So time period is five seconds. Next is coefficient of x is k, which is pi, which is equals to two pi by lambda. So pi pi cancel out. So lambda is equals to two meter. Samira, just tell me the direction of propagation of wave. Okay. Have, Toward the yes. negative axis. Which axis? Negative axis. X axis, Y axis, Z axis. Negative X axis. Good. This x is directional propagation, and this plus and minus will define its direction. So we can say this is negative x axis. Arslan, any doubt? Samira, done? Yes, sir. Okay. Now from this part, next we have to define, since y is displacement of particle. So if you have to calculate velocity of particle, acceleration of particle. So next is velocity and acceleration of particle and wave as y equals to a times sine omega t minus of kx. So in this part, we have two different functions. One is t dependent and one is x dependent. So to get velocity, which is nothing but displacement over time, that is dy over dt. So you must have to differentiate this particular function with respect to time. But if this particular function having two different variables, so you must differentiate it partially with respect to only one variable at a time. So del y over del t, a differentiation of sign will be cos And only t is variable here. So its coefficient is omega being constant, keep it outside. And differentiation of t is just one. So this term is velocity of particle, which is omega times a cos omega t minus kx. Same as SHM. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now to get maximum particle velocity, this cos having maximum value one. So if you substitute velocity of particle max equals to omega times a. Next, acceleration. Differentiation of particle velocity with respect to time will be omega times a. Differentiation of cos is minus of sine omega t minus kx. 
and differentiation of omega t in which omega being constant keep it outside and differentiation of t will be just one so this will define you acceleration of particle minus of omega square a sine omega t minus kx the maximum value of sine is one so we can write maximum particle acceleration will be minus of omega square t just write it down Done, now next related to this part you'll be asked to define particle velocity and v's velocity or v velocity or what will be the relation between them or what will be the difference between them. So next is, the relation between particle velocity and phase or wave velocity. In this part, suppose there is a particle at this point. These are different particle about their mean position. Vibrating about this. Like this. So it will create a disturbance which may propagate along this entire string. So first is particle velocity. So you'll say the velocity with which particle of medium oscillate about their mean position is called particle velocity. So first is the velocity with which particle of medium oscillates about their mean position is called particle velocity. Next, phase velocity or wave velocity. This entire disturbance may propagate along this way, having some velocity that is called phase velocity or wave velocity. So let's say this is crust, this is another crust. So distance between adjacent crust will be lambda. And time taken for this particular distance will be one complete time period t. So next is phase or wave velocity. The velocity 
with which the disturbance propagates along the medium. is called wave velocity or phase velocity. Suppose if you have to calculate its value, so velocity is equals to distance by time. Distance we have lambda and time taken is time period t. One by t is also called frequency. So it will be lambda into f and it may further equals to omega by k. For particle velocity, it is nothing but omega times a cos omega t minus of kx. Now, how to relate these two terms? I'm defining. Samaira, any doubt? No, sir. Okay, just strike it down. So can you say how omega f is equal to, sorry, how uh, this wavelength and frequency is equal to omega by k? As omega is equal to nothing but 2 pi f and k is nothing but 2 pi by lambda. Okay. So just divide these two terms. 2 pi, 2 pi will cancel out. Lambda will move to numerator. So we'll get lambda into f. That is omega by k. Okay, sir. Done, sir. Okay. Now, next, we have to relate these two parts. So, let me define how to relate. As normal equation, y equals to a times sine omega times minus kx. So on differentiating with respect to time, you'll get velocity. So velocity of particle is del V over del T. Del Y over del T, that is omega times A cos of omega T minus Kx. But if we differentiate it with respect to X, again, differentiating with respect to X, In this part, differentiating with respect to time, partial differentiating. Again, partial differentiation with respect to x. So on differentiating, you will get a being constant, differentiation of sine cos differentiation of sine will be cos omega t minus of kx. And since we are differentiating with respect to x, so x will be variable, whose coefficient is minus k, and differentiation of x will be just one. 
so you will get minus of k into a cos omega t minus of kx this dy over dx will define you nothing but slope of curve at that instant now we have two different part this term and this term let's say this is equation first and this is equation second samira any doubt no sir so if you divide these two part velocity of particle divided by slope you will get cos omega t minus kx cos omega t minus kx will cancel out so you will get nothing but minus of omega by k which is also equals to velocity of p so from this part we can say velocity of particle is minus of slope of wave at that instant multiplied by velocity of wave first write it down then i'm defining you it's physical mean just write it down Samira, done. Yes, sir. Done. Okay. Now suppose there is a wave on a string like this, and suppose there is a particle at this point, let's say A, at this point, let's say B. so you will be asked in which direction a and b will be going at this instant find direction of motion of point a and b samira any idea just guess uh particle is towards the negative axis no no it must be vibrating up and down only okay mm. let me define you how to solve according to the above relation first we have to calculate slope at that instant so for slope just draw a tangent like this draw a horizontal line to that point and define its inclination is it positive angle or negative angle at point a is it inclination is positive or negative this is your horizontal line it is going towards downward so we can say this is negative is it clear yes so in this part slope at point a is some negative value let's say theta 1 so it will be minus of tan theta 1 so according to formula velocity of particle at point a is minus of slope and slope we have minus of tan theta 1 multiplied by velocity of v so this minus and this minus will become plus v times tan theta 1 in positive direction so we can say 
particle at point A must be going along upward direction. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Similarly, if you have to calculate for point B, just draw a tangent to that point, draw a horizontal line and define its inclination. Is it positive or negative? Positive. Good. So velocity of particle for point B is minus, slope is positive tan theta 2 multiplied by V. So you'll get minus V tan theta 2. So we can say particle at point B must be going upward or downward? Downward. Good. So I just defined these two different direction of oscillation only by the rule or by the relation of this particle velocity and wave velocity. Any doubt? No. Okay, just write it down. Done, now, from this part, you'll be asked, find the ratio of maximum particle velocity and wave velocity. Try to find some item. Use their formula and divide them. Samira, you got any answer? No, sir. Tell me the value of maximum particle velocity. Just see in this part. Maximum particle velocity is? Omega A. Good. So it is omega times A and wave velocity is equals to omega by K. So if you divide these two part, omega and omega will cancel out. So you'll get K multiplied by A. This K also be written as two pi by lambda into A. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Done, sir. Next. Reflection of P. Suppose you have a string and there is a pulse on it. And it is connected by any 
rod like this. It means this particular end is free to oscillate. So we can say this is free end. A pulse is projected along this way. So this is called incident pulse or incident wave. Any doubt? Now, after reflection, since this particular end is free to oscillate, so when this pulse reaches to this end, it may oscillate according to its shape. And so that reflected wave or reflected pulse will be like this in just opposite direction. So in this part, we can say there is no change in direction of pulse, but there is change in its oscillation or propagation. So in first part, Y incident is going along positive X axis. So its equation will be A times of sine omega t minus of kx. But for reflected part, it will be A times sine omega t plus kx. And there is no change in phase in these two parts. So we can say phase difference is zero. Samira, is it clear? Yes, sir. But in case of rigid support, suppose a pulse is projected towards fixed end. So on reflection, the direction of pulse get reversed like this. So in this part, incident wave is A times of sine omega t minus of kx. It is going towards positive x-axis. And reflected wave just in opposite direction. So differ in phase by pi. So it may be written as A times sine omega t plus kx due to its direction plus pi due to its phase difference. It may also be written as A times sine omega t plus kx. Both are same. So from this, we can say phase difference is pi. So you'll be asked if a wave or pulse is projected towards any soft surface, will there be any phase difference between incident and reflected? So you'll say no, phase difference will be zero. But if a wave is projected towards the rigid surface, then its phase and direction gets changed. Phase difference will be pi. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Just write it down. Thank you. Now, using this concept, we have to define stationary or standing wave. Suppose
this is one end connected by fixed support and this is other end connected by fixed support so in this part a wave is incident along this direction so on striking this fixed support its direction will get reversed according to the previous concept so we can say the reflected wave or pulse may travel along this way so this is reflected wave so if we proceed this particular wave backward to this point to define its phase difference if both are same then path from this point to this point or angle from this point to this point will be pi that's why we can say incident wave and reflected wave differ in phase by pi samaira is it clear yes sir so in this part a wave is incident towards positive x axis so it will be a times sin omega t minus of kx so on reflection this is incident wave the reflected wave is a times of sin omega t plus kx but in opposite direction so there will be negative sin wave now these two are superimposing over one another or overlapping over one another so on adding y equals to y incident plus y reflected y incident we have a times sin omega t minus of kx and y reflected we have minus of a sin omega t plus kx now take out a as common so you're left with sin omega t minus kx minus sin omega t plus kx first write it down down so now how to add these two part let me define your formula sin of c and sin of d we have one angle this and the other this in which this part is greater as compared to this part so let's say greater part is d c and smaller part is d so we have c in negative and d in positive it means minus of sin c plus of sin d so you'll get minus 2 times sin c plus d divided by 2 cos c minus d divided by 2 so using this identity we simplify this above part so y equals to a being outside and on adding you will get minus 2 sin c plus d by 2 
C omega t plus kx D omega t minus kx divided by 2 multiplied by cos C minus t omega t plus kx minus omega t and minus minus plus I've done a little mistake. Then here we have negative and here we have positive. It will be negative, it will be positive. So, sign C minus D, that is C minus D and C plus D. By two. So if you simplify it, this part and this part will cancel out. This part and this part will cancel out. So on solving, you will get minus of two times a, kx, kx, two kx, divide by two, it will be just kx, so sine of kx. Omega t to omega t is two omega t divided by two, it will be just omega t. So this will be your final expression on simplifying these two parts. Now from this part, we can see, we have two different segments in this. One is time dependent, and one is X dependent. So if an equation in which X dependent and time dependent both are separately written, that will define you equation of standing wave. It will never be traveling wave. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So from this part, we can say there is two different point. One is this one at which particle separation is maximum. So this is called anti-node. And second one at this point, when displacement of particle is minimum, so this is called node. So you will be asked to define position of node and anti-node from this particular relation. So in this expression, we have two different terms. One is time dependent, which will simply define you oscillation of particle at that instant. And next part, it will define you position of node and anti-node. First, node, and second, anti-node. For node, amplitude of particle is zero. It means, sine of kx will be zero. Sine of n pi is equals to zero. So from this part, if you compare, you will get kx is equals to n pi. So x is equals to n pi over k. k is nothing but two pi by lambda. So it will be n lambda by two. On putting the value of n, you will get position of node at different instant on the string. Similarly, for anti-node, sine theta will be maximum, that is amplitude is maximum. So sine of kx will be one, and the maximum value of sine will be at this point. So just compare it, you will get kx is equals to 2n minus 1 pi by 2 and x will be 2n minus 1 pi by 
two k, and if you substitute k is equals to two pi by lambda, you will get two n minus one lambda by four. Now, on putting the value of n, you will get position of antinoor on the string. Is it clear, Samira? Yes, sir. Let me define you. Suppose if you put the value of n to be one, so position of node will be lambda by two, two lambda by two, three lambda by two, and so on. That is integral multiple of lambda by two. But in this part, if you put the value of n to be one, two, three, so x will be lambda by four. Three lambda by four, five lambda by four, and so on. That is odd integral multiple of lambda by four. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Arslan, any doubt? Okay, just write it down. Done. Next, according to the normal equation of V, we have y equals to a times sine omega t. But in this part, it is two times of a sine of kx. So we can say amplitude becomes twice as that of incident or reflected wave. So you'll be asked. If y equals to zero point zero six sine pi times x cos two pi by five t, is it traveling wave or? Standing wave. First, second, amplitude of actual wave, and third, velocity of wave. Samira, so is it traveling wave or a standing wave? Just compare. We have for traveling wave, omega t and kx both will be together. In one bracket, but in case of the standing wave, both will be with different function. One is sine of kx, and the other is cos omega t. Means kx part and omega t part both are separately written. Samira, is it clear how to distinguish? Yes, sir. So. What you can say about this particular wave? Is it standing wave or traveling wave? Standing wave. Good. So this is equation of standing wave. Next, what would be the amplitude of its actual wave? Just compare it with this part. On adding, its amplitude become twice as that of incident or reflected wave. So from this part, it having amplitude. Point zero 
6. So it must be equals to 2 times of a. So actual amplitude of b will be half of it. Is it clear? Yes, sir. And third, we have to calculate its velocity. So how to define velocity? Just find omega. Omega is nothing but coefficient of t. And next, k, nothing but coefficient of x. So from this part, we can say omega is 2 pi by 5 and k is just pi. So velocity of wave is omega by k, that is 2 pi by 5 pi. Pi pi cancel out, 2 by 5, that is 0.4 meter per second. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Arslan, any doubt? Just write it down. None. Now, next problem will be to find phase difference, part difference, and time difference. So, let me define you the relation between phase, path, and time difference. According to normal equation traveling wave, y equals to a times sine omega t minus of kx. So this angle of sine is called phase. So we can write phi equals to omega t minus of kx. Now break this particular term into two parts. To define first, let's say, T is constant. In second part, let's say X is constant. So phi one will be equals to omega times T minus of KX one at some specific position X one. And phi two will be equals to omega times T minus KX two at some different position X two. So if you subtract these two part, this term, this term will cancel out. So it will become phi one minus phi two equals to k x two minus x one. We may write this phi one minus phi two as delta phi k x two minus x one as delta x. If you substitute the value of k, it will be 2 pi by lambda times delta x. So this is first relation between delta phi, that is phase difference, and delta x, that is part difference. Suppose x is constant. So phi 1 will be omega times t1 minus of kx at instant t1 and phi two is equals to omega times t two minus kx. So if you subtract these two part, minus, minus, and plus, this term and this term will cancel out. So you will get phi one minus phi two is equals to omega being common, t one minus t two. So this is phase difference, omega times, time difference, we may write omega as 2 pi by t multiplied by delta t.
this phi is phase difference. This delta x is path difference. And this delta t is time difference. So you will be asked to calculate phase difference with respect to part difference or time difference. So you may use these different formula accordingly. Samaira, is it clear? Yes, sir. Just write it down. Dancer. If y is equals to zero point zero two sine pi by four times x minus Pi times t. Fine. Phase difference first. If delta x is fifty centimeter, and second, if time difference is one by four second. So for any problem, first try it. coefficient of x as k. So in this part. K is pi by four, and omega that is coefficient of t pi. Now use the formula. Phase difference equals to k times delta x, and for time dependent, delta phi equals to omega times delta t. Substitute their value and simplify it. Any doubts, Maya? No, sir. Try to find. So, yes. So should we convert a fifty centimeter into meter? Yes.
Okay, try to find the second part. Okay, we have pi by four and delta x 50 centimeter. So it will be one by two. So it will be pi by eight. Omega we have pi and time is one by four. So it will be just pi by four. So this is how we can <clears throat> find phase difference with respect to time difference and part difference. Only you have to remember formula, nothing more. Next is beads. Samaya, so any idea what do you mean by beads? Suppose there is a wave I'm just assuming this entire pulse is created in one, one second. So what will be frequency of this particular wave? Samara, how to define frequency of a particular wave? Just count number of complete oscillation. It is starting from this point and completed at this. So it will be one oscillation, two oscillation, three oscillation, and four oscillation. Number of oscillation made by a wave in one second is called its frequency. So we can say it having four hertz frequency. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now suppose there is another wave. What will frequency of this wave? How many complete oscillations are there? Samaira? Four. This particular wave started from this point, half oscillation, other half oscillation to complete at this point. So two. Complete at this point. So two oscillations. So its frequency will be two hertz. Let's say this is B. So if these two wave superimpose over one another, So it will create
Why is it so? I'm defining you. At this point, direction of wave is along this way and direction of wave is along this way. Both are along C direction, so they will tend to add up. But at this point, direction of wave is along this and direction of this wave is along this. So they will tend to oppose each other. So they will start subtracting. Similarly, at this point, they will add and this point, they will start to subtract. So on superimposing these two wave, you will get this type of formation of wave. Is it clear? Yes, sir. The point having maximum amplitude is called loud sound. So this is called loud one. And the point having minimum or least amplitude is sense sound. Sense sound. Combination of one loud and one faint is called one beat. So this is one beat and this is another beat. So beat is nothing but when two wave having different frequency propagating along same direction overlap over one another, producing loud sound and faint sound together. This combination is called beats. Is it clear? Yes. Sir. So you may define <clears throat> the superimposition of two V having different frequency. propagating in same medium produces combination of loud and fan sound. This combination of loud and fence sound is called beat. And the number of such beat produced by wave in one oscillation in one second is called its beat frequency. So next is number of beats produced by wave per unit time is called just write it down
we have to prove this particular part mathematically also. So let's say one of the wave is A times sine omega 1 t and the other wave is A times sine omega 2 into t. Since wave should have different frequency. So on adding y equals to phi 1 plus phi 2. So take out a as common. So you'll get omega 1 t plus sine omega 2 into t. Using the above identity sine c plus sine d equals to 2 times sine c plus d by 2 times cos c minus d by 2. Using this formula, we may write y equals to a being constant, keep it outside. So it will become sine c plus d by 2 c that is omega we may write it as 2 pi f plus omega 2 2 pi f divided by 2 times t cos 2 pi f1 minus 2 pi f2 divided by 2 times t so on solving you will get 2a sine 2 to cancel out so you'll get pi f1 plus f2 multiplied by t cos pi f1 minus f2 multiplied by t so this will be your final expression in this part so we have two different terms one is F1 plus F2. And the other is F1 minus F2. So Myra, any doubt? No, sir. So according to the above part from graph, first wave having frequency 4 hertz and second wave having frequency 2 hertz. So this will be F1 and this will be F2. If you add these two terms, you'll get six hertz. It means there will be a wave at this point vibrating like this. Just count number of complete oscillation for two different waves. In first part for this, one oscillation, two oscillation, three, four, five, and six. It is six hertz, which is nothing but F1 plus F2. Now just count the outermost part. That is blue one. It is starting from this move to this point one oscillation and then move to this point another oscillation so it will have two hertz which is nothing but f1 minus f2 so we can say on overlapping of two wave we will get two different wave one having frequency f1 plus f2 and the other having frequency f1 minus f2 is it clear Yes, sir. So which one will be termed as beat frequency, F1 plus F2 or F1 minus F2? Just count number of beats produced in this part. One beat and two beat. So what will be the frequency of beats from this point to this point? Beat frequencies, number of beats produced by wave Per unit time. So how many beats are producing from this point to this point? Samaira? 
Sir, I didn't understand. Can you explain? Just count number of beats produced from this point to this point. Beat is nothing but one loud and one faint. So half faint and half faint and one complete loud. So it will be one beat from this point to this point. And similarly, one beat from this point to this point. Is it clear? So is it two beats? Yeah, two beats per second. So it will be termed as two beats frequency. Yes, sir. And which is nothing but this blue line that is nothing but difference of frequency of two wave. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So from this part, we can conclude this difference of two wave will define you beats frequency. So, beats frequency is equals to difference of frequency of two wave. Any doubt? No, sir. So, can you show the graph? Okay. Dancing. Dancing. So related to this part, it will be given if y1 equals to a times sine 100 pi t and y2 equals to a times sine 106 pi t. So what will be b's frequency? Find b's frequency. So you will say coefficient of t in this expression will be omega. So omega one is 100 pi. Omega is nothing but two pi f, 100 pi. So f1 will be equals to 50 hertz. Is it clear, Samira? Yes, sir. Similarly, omega two we have 106 pi so it will be equals to 2 pi f2 106 pi so f2 from this part will be 53 hertz so beat frequency is equals to difference of frequency of two wave that is f2 minus f1 so it will be 53 minus 50, that will be three hertz. So this is how we can solve each frequency related to any problem, related to equation. Any doubt? No, sir. Arslan, is it clear? Okay.
डांसर फॉर लास्ट पार्ट स्टैंडिंग वेव इन ऑर्गन पाइप organ pipe means fluid shahnai these type of instrument so mainly we have two types of organ pipe one is open organ pipe and the other is closed organ pipe an open organ pipe a wave will be created like this in which there is node at midpoint and anti node at its end but in case of closed organ pipe it will be like this anti node at open end and node at this closed end so we have to calculate frequency related to this standing wave so from this part length of this organ pipe will be equals to integral multiple of lambda by 2 so lambda will be 2 times of l divided by n according to formula velocity is equals to lambda into frequency so frequency will be equals to velocity by wavelength so if you substitute you will get n v divided by 2l frequency of wave created in this particular open organ pipe but in case of anti node it is about 2n minus 1 lambda by 4 so lambda will be equals to 4 times of l divided by 2n minus 1 so if you substitute frequency will be equals to 2n minus 1 v divided by 4 so just substitute the value of n 1 2 3 so on you will get different different frequency of wave created in this organ by is it clear yes just write it down dance sir okay that's all for the entire chapter that is we so we have all alhamdulillah finished this entire syllabus so let's stop here just revise this entire syllabus try to do more and more problems and ask me okay okay sir okay then thank you yeah.